Thanks again to our sponsors, Hit Point Press and their Fable Makers deck. All right, guys, Jameson and Alex here. Today, we're going to be going over our first viewer submitted subclass. And we're going to do two for this one because we really enjoyed these. So these are from Fantastic Emporium. So make sure you guys check them out. So today is the Veil Dancer Ranger subclass. Yes. If you're new, we're going to rate the role play, combat, and synergy based on the abilities gained in the subclass, how they improve the base class abilities. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to be entered in our D&D Beyond Players Bundle giveaway. Free stuff is wonderful. Let's get right into it. Alex, what do we get? Okay, so we're a ranger. We are a half caster. So yeah. we're going to get some extra spells. Yay. You will notice a very quick pattern with a certain magic type from Would you say a hypnotic spells. pattern? He's a dad now. Uh, I had to. I'm and, sorry. And it, it's, it's all I I'm hear. sorry. It's just dad joke after dad joke, and I, I hate it. Anyway. Uh, silent image, minor illusion, mirror image, hypnotic pattern. Ah. Gosh dang. Anyway, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Hallucinatory terrain, which is a fun word to try to say very quickly, uh, and mislead. So again, almost entirely illusion-based magics that you will get. Also at level 3, you're going to have your Veil of Mirages ability, which is going to be what the whole subclass is really built around. Mm -hmm. You have learned a, to quickly weave a cloak of illusions around you and your allies called a Veil. As a bonus action, you can target a willing creature that you can see within 30 feet, including yourself, and give it one of the following veils. A veil lasts for its whole duration until you use this ability again or until it is dispelled via magic. First is the Deceiving Veil. You can change the way a willing creature looks for one hour as per the Disguise Self spell. This effect ceases if the creature stops being willing. So if you... That can definitely come into play. Yeah, disguise self into something and it gets them into trouble. And also, it's like, nope, 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 nope. We have Concealing Veil, which your veil provides camouflage. For one hour, the target has advantage on stealth checks. I'm immediately looking at things that have heavy armor and have disadvantage on their stealth all yep. the time. You can Break at least that. use this to negate that disadvantage. And finally, the Shimmering Veil. You blur the image of a creature whose silhouette seems to shift quickly and undulate. For one minute, all attacks against the target are made with disadvantage unless they are incapacitated, restrained, or otherwise unable to move, a la the blur spell. Yes. These veils are perfect tools for a deadly ambush. When a creature benefiting from this feature hits a creature with a weapon during its first round of combat, they deal an extra 1d6 damage to the target which can then take this extra damage only during this fight. The damage goes up 2d6 at level 7 and 3d6 at level 11. The creature that benefit from one of these veils takes damage. The feature ceases to function to the start of their next turn. So like if, you know, the shimmering veil example, if they're the blur, this advantage, if they do get hit, it's disabled for that round. Right. But once their turn comes back up, it reactivates. So that's kind of a nifty thing. Yeah. And it, it, it helps keep it, I think, a little bit more balanced, which is interesting mm -hmm. because obviously there's no concentration related to it. Right. So, uh, yeah, it helps with the balance. And this is a number of uses per proficiency bonus, per long rest. So probably also a good thing that they do kind of stick after getting hit. They don't just right. immediately go away. Right. Because you can't do these just 15, 16 times a day. Exactly. And, and you can only have one up at a time yeah. as well. Level 7, we get Elusive Shrouds. Your veils now embrace each of your whims and movements with disorienting grace. You gain the following features. You can use an action to change the appearance of your deceiving veil at will without expending another use, though it doesn't ex uh, extend the duration of the veil, as long as the target is willing, of course. Creatures under the effect of your concealing veil can attempt to hide in direct observation, which is nice. And then creatures under the effect of shimmering veil don't trigger attacks of opportunity when they move, as each step makes them blink in and out sight for a second so it helps them kind of maintain that veil a little bit better as well yeah level 11 is vaporous dodge vaporous another fun word those affected by your mirages are never truly where they seem to be whenever a creature under the effect of one of your veils receives damage they can use their reaction to teleport up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space they can see or have occupied in the last minute almost like a recall effect yes as far Absolutely. as that goes but yeah, and it's there's they can do that as many times as they want as long as they're under the effect of the veil. So again, it's 
Just a, a, a recurring buff that just these veils right. keep getting better and better as we level up. Yes. And then finally we get our capstone, Misty Warriors. Which is quite a lot. Yeah, there's a lot to this. You can create one of the following effects as a bonus action while you are under the effect of one of your veils or as part of the bonus action used to activate your veil. Once you have used this feature, you can't do so again until you take a short or long rest. The first option is you can summon a tangible and identical illusion of yourself. You can summon a number of doubles equal to your wisdom modifier in points of your choice that you can see within 30 feet of you. Each double benefits from your veil and makes an attack against a target of your choice when it appears, as if you were making an attack with the weapon you have in hand. After each double has attacked, you can choose to swap places with one of your doubles. The doubles last until the start of your next turn. They share your AC, are immune to poison and psychic damage, and disappear if they take one point of damage. So, I immediately think, is this just right. me? Well, that, that's a good thing, but no. no. Sorry. I'm going classic. Legend of Zelda. Link to the past. Okay. Ganon. You're right there. <laughs> Split up into the yeah. and there's a shift around, you're hitting yeah. back the ball of the Yeah. Yep. I just I wish gotta keep it in the D D world with Echo Knight Fighter and I can't. sometimes sometimes I can't. It just happens. And the second option you have on here yeah, is Yeah, that's not the only <laughs> option you have. You can target a number of willing creatures that you can see within thirty feet of you inferior or equal to your wisdom modifier. Each creature benefits from the current veil of Mirage that you have chosen for its entire duration, or until you lose concentration as if concentrating on a spell. If you lose concentration, the other targets lose the veil, but you don't lose it yourself. Right. If you apply Deceiving Veil in this way, you can choose a different appearance for each individual target. Target of this feature loses its benefits if they start or end their turn more than 60 feet from you. So it does give like a party-wide buff mm -hmm. or you know RP potential, but you gotta stay relatively close together or it's gonna fall off. Right. So. so that's one of those things like if you were trying to get through an area, you could basically get like a whole like a pass without a trace kind of effect. Instead of a instead of a flat, you know, roll, it is an advantage on stealth for everybody if you're trying to get through a crowded space or whatever without right. being detected, or an area of disguised self without spending a bunch of spell slots or anything right. like that. That could be done that way for you too. Yeah, so some interesting utility. But yeah, those are all the abilities. So we'll just move on into the rating portion of the video. First up is the roleplay, asterisk as always. Talking about roleplay, we're talking about interacting with the world around you, interacting with NPCs, non-combat scenarios, avoiding combat, things outside of the initiative order. Not talking about your class fantasy history, lore, background that's on you as a player. We can't rate you, but we can rate the abilities gained in the subclass, how they might improve your potential in those roleplay scenarios. That's correct. So, going through here in the roleplay department, you have a pretty solid spell list, and it's added for free, which is nice. Uh, but you are a half caster, and because you're a half caster, you have to factor into your saving throws. Uh, if anyone's trying to like actually look into your illusions, yep. the, the perception for that is not going to be super high because wisdom is typically not your primary stat nope. as a ranger. So mm -mm. you have to keep that in mind. Uh, but for the most part, if you're kind of being clever with it, if you don't give them a chance to get up close to examine them, yep. you're probably going to be off fine in the role play side of things. Yeah. Uh, the stealth and disguise veils have definitely some solid RP use. Uh, being able to, you know, disguise self for someone, help them get into a place they're not supposed to get into, or just stealth and, you know, sneak past places that they can't get in yeah. conventional way. And then you have some kind of niche stuff, which you might not initially think of with the teleport veil at 11. Because, say, someone is stealthing or something, mm -hmm. and they fall into, like, a pit trap, Yep. and they take damage... They could teleport back out immediately, which is something in an exploration side of things that could come into play. Though yep. it is a little bit more on the niche side, or well, they, chases they, as well. Yeah, they they walk the, through a door that triggers a magical trap, and now they're pinned behind a door. And because just, it, this says that the spots you can bet. see or you have been right. recently. So like, if it's just on the other side of a door, you like, yeah, there's some some utility for there yeah. for sure. And then the capstone party wide disguise or you know stealth definitely has some uses. The, the biggest thing holding this back is the proficiency uses. Mm -hmm. So there there is some limitations to it, but we still gave it a 4 out of 5 because we really do... And like think it. about that. We gave a 4 out of 5 and an RP Ranger. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, those <laughs> that's are almost few, unheard of. Those are very few and far between. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so again, a very welcome change and a different yes. thing. I'm describing this to actually one of our group members earlier when I was reading through this, and I said it's it, this feels very supporty. Yeah. 
for That's a right. ranger build. He's like, oh, really? I didn't think that that was allowed to happen. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like because you think, oh, it's, if you're playing support, you got to be playing a bard or a cleric or a druid or yeah, you know, or if you're playing the, a tanky character you're for defensive support, like you. Ranger, like that's like support, like rogue, or right. that doesn't happen. <laughs> so cool, but you know, especially in the RP setting, there's a lot of support there because of all the group buffs and everything. Right, uh, and some of that obviously carries over into the combat side of things. Yes. Uh, with your Bale of Mirages, yeah, the disguise self and the bonus stealth checks really aren't going to trigger you know thing for combat. But obviously, the Shimmering Veil giving you a chance to blur for somebody, disadvantage yep. on all for all attacks against that target, very helpful. A for, you know, if you've got a, a big body in there, just making them harder to hit so they can absorb more hits is mm-hmm. always good. If you've got a squishy, you know, character in your party that, you know, that rogue or that, you know, rogue, that wizard, that sorcerer uh, has a chance to, you know, not get hit as much from a distance by trying to fire arrows at him or, right. you know, spell attacks, you know, chance for them to get hit from other stuff at a distance helps them stay alive there, which is great. And that extra little... Almost like Gloomstalker Ranger or, yeah, or like Rogue sneak attack damage up front doesn't you know, is it crazy? It gives you an incentive to use it off the bat, mm-hmm. but you don't have to. No, you don't. So have it's to. not like crazy damage that you feel like you have to use it in combat every time, right? But it's there, and it's yeah. one of those things if you're if you're already under the effect of it in combat starts, yeah, or if you have like an assassin or rogue or Gloomstalker in your in your party, then yeah. you give them extra extra stuff on there on top of yeah. that. Mm-hmm. I see, I, well, the the way of if crits change with one D and D, that may hurt this a little bit. But I'm saying because I imagine like assassination rogue, like creating sneak attack, yeah, having this on top years. of it. We you're gonna get like, all, all of the crits uh, and things. But anyway, um, but yeah, it's, and also the, this helps in combat, especially for the blur effect of if somebody does take damage, yeah. that blur effect's only gone until their turn comes back around and they get it right. back again. So just again, helping someone's survivability out pretty consistently for just one use. Right. For that, for one minute, which is pretty much going to be an entire combat. It should be. If you got a combat times. that lasts more than 10 turns, you're in a slugfest. Yeah. Yeah. Really. I mean, unless if you took like a party of two, maybe there's three, some, yeah, I could see that. But if you've got four more people. Yeah. If, yeah. Someone's got a ton. You have a lot of things you're fighting or, or just so in, much you're health. In, you're in it rough. Yeah, there's so much health pull somebody, that somebody's coming down with anyway. Uh, and then we just get to buff our elusive shroud. So you're in your blur effect says that, you know, Opportunity attacks aren't triggered by them moving through. Again, nothing more crazy, defense. but more defense, more survivability. Uh, the vaporous dodge again, more <laughs> more, more defense survivability. So, so if they get, you know, pounced on multi attack, multi attack, like oh, this thing's about to swing at me. It hits me once, but that Breaks second it. and third attack, pfft, I'm out. Yeah, all, all of a sudden now I'm not inside your attack range. <laughs> Yeah, if you're fighting one thing, it's it's very powerful yeah. and defensive. Especially if it's just like some big brute thing that right. wallops you for a ton, but it only has like a range of 10 feet right. kind of thing, or five, obviously. And then, of course, your capstone is very, very interesting. And this yeah. is one of those, to me, like high-player IQ use abilities. Oh, yeah. I mean, this, I think this class in general just is, just because yeah. of the, with allu- anything with illusions, mm-hmm. the more creative you are, the more effective it can be. Yeah. Um, and you know, while this definitely leads heavier on the RP side, there's definitely some some opportunities to help your party with survivability. And this gives you some extra t- attack damage all of a sudden in a burst. Yeah. Especially if you wanted to open with like, oh, your disguised self, here's bonus damage, summon all the clones. Yeah. Like big swarm. Like you can throw a, this assassination rogue. Or multi-class into assassin. Yeah. <laughs> like another ranger playing Gloomstalker and then whatever barbarian with his advantage on initiative rolls. You could have like a really strong like ambush opening round on something, yeah. Uh, for a lot of creative, interest, interesting things. However, like just like with the RP, they are limited to proficiency bonus uses, and everything yes. is tied around those veils, just making them more powerful, right? And really using those at maximum six times a day, right? Now, granted, for combat side of things, they're lasting for a minute, so they should last, you know, for the combat. But you're only going to give one you're, of those out at a time, kind right. of thing, and you're not going to be. You know, with only six uses max for the day, you're not going to be wanting to throw those out every single combat, probably. Just yeah. you want to save them for when you really need them. Right. So, score wise, we went with a three and a half out of possible five. There's definitely some interesting things. Again, in a higher IQ player, you could definitely find some interesting use for all this illusion magic that's in there. But with the spell list, too, with, you know, hallucinatory terrain, things like that, you can have some fun stuff with for sure. Right. And I think, too, just kind of switching over to synergy. Uh, with this, I think one key point to to make about the combat as well is uh, part of it is is difficult because the way that the mirage works it with the veil, um, 
with the Shimmering Veil, particularly with the defensive options, uh, the way that there's no concentration for you, and it's just, mm -hmm. it lasts for a minute, you know, they have, obviously if they're incapacitated or restrained or whatever, there's ways to break it, you know, dispel magic. There's lots of things that can break it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're fighting something that doesn't have any way to do that, it is very potent, okay? So if you had two, if you had, you know, uh, more uses, you start getting into some gray area where it's like, okay, this could get this could get pretty strong pretty quick if you can just do it all the time, you know? Right. So there needs to be a limit on it, mm -hmm. uh, but that does also hold it back a little bit because yeah. if you put no limit on it, then it gets pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. So it's finding that on there, which I think is, is done well. Yeah. Um, and going into the synergy, it does give you lots of utility. A ton, especially for a ranger gall that's yeah. hurting for utility options. And you get some, some uh, definitely some new options with your spells, which definitely can help. Again, illusion magic is probably one of the more underrated types of magic. And if your DM allows uh, certain things to happen, you know, or plays into it as they should with particular monsters, depending on what they're running, you know, lower intelligence monsters should be more apt to fall for these kind of tricks. Uh, if if they're if they're open to not because sometimes you know DMs they <laughs> will meta game themselves and be like, oh, I know that that's an illusion, and they'll just yeah. kind of but and, it, and players and DMs are alike or both. It's it's difficult sometimes to set aside what you as a player knows right. versus what your be. character knows, or is what you what you as a DM know versus what right. whatever you're controlling may know. Right. So we'll we'll try to assume that you know your party is not completely you know I say your party your play group is not completely new and they are there to have a good time <laughs> and let players yep. be you know. Have their wins yeah. and let the and DM I, and let I, stuff happen. I encourage DMs as I encourage my own to give give like know what your players can do to give them opportunities to be able to do some creative things. Absolutely, because I think it's very fun when you throw obstacles at uh, at a party that really only one of them has much they can do with it. Right, because it gives it gives each player a chance to shine, especially if you've got somebody in your group that is newer, yeah. or maybe they're maybe they're not as just outgoing of explosive personality as myself, <laughs> um, and they have to kind of come out of their shell a little bit, and that's fine. You know, everybody's a little different. You know, not everybody can be up in their, your face as much as I can be. <laughs> took took me a while to break break him out of his shell, but nobody ever gets to this level. Um, but you know, it's it's a great opportunity for somebody's like I, you know you're trying to maybe warm them up to you and, right. and, and to your group. If it's like a friend of a friend coming in to play your group, and you know if you can find ways to give them a chance to shine. Yeah, uh, I, I think that's a, a great thing for DMs to do, and this this creates some interesting opportunities with the, the illusion magic, especially. Absolutely. So, uh, all that being said, we just gave it a three and a half out of five. Again, yep. same same kind of uh, hindrances on here. But again, there is a needed limit, which, yeah. you know, it could be easily, you could easily go from like a three and a half to like broken. Yeah. Be, if you take away some of the limitations. So yeah. it's necessary. And for what it is, I think it's it's actually really well done. Yeah. And very interesting, unique. And again, what's my number one rule when I have new subclasses and new content? Why are you here? Yes. Like what makes you stand out? Why are you being added to the existing list of subclasses? Be different in some way. You know, even if you're kind of borrowing the things from other classes, like right. stand out in your own way and be unique, and this does that. And there's some in indirect synergy buffs too, with the fact of, yeah, you're a half caster, but you've got some stuff that you know, you wouldn't normally have access to. And right. You get some spell effects from your things that require you don't have to use spell slots to get. Mm -hmm. So there, there's there's some nice, interesting give and takes built into the the kit and everything. Yeah. So. That's it for today, guys. We do have one other one from Fantastic Emporium that we'll be doing as well, so stay tuned to the channel for that. But if you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know all of our new videos are coming out. Check out Fantastic Emporium. Thanks again to our sponsors, guys. Make sure you check out their stuff. And as always, guys, thanks, thanks for watching. Thanks again to our sponsors, Hit Point Press and their Fable Makers deck. Omens and fortunes that you can incorporate into your campaigns. It's got books to describe ways to add these things into your campaigns to add intrigue, plot hooks, all kinds of different ways to utilize these features. Hey, check out this really weird or intriguing, interesting thing that kind of steer people back towards your main plotline that you're needing to advance a story you're trying to get to. Absolutely. So, guys, make sure you check out the link in the description down below.